This is the Engage Podcast with me, PBE, episode number two. Welcome to the Engage Podcast, where it's all about increasing your influence, impact, and income as a public speaker. And now, your host, he gave his first speech at age 12 and hasn't shut up since, Paul Evans. What's up, legend? Hey, everything used to be so simple, didn't it? There used to be three television stations, and that was it. There were about four brands of cereal, as I remember, and each one of those came with a prize. And back in the day, parents said something, and kids did it. Times have changed. Things have become different. Same is true for public speakers, because back in the day, the only way to really be a public speaker was to actually be on stage in front of an audience. And all of that is radically shifted. And back in the day, to be considered a speaker, you basically had to be a keynote speaker. Nobody else called themselves a speaker. But today, it's all over the place. A person writes a book, puts it on Kindle. Nobody really knows about it. But you go to their website, and they say they are an author and a speaker, even if they've never given a speech in their life because they're willing to talk. They're willing to communicate their message. So times have changed. I'm not even saying that negatively. I think that we all need to stand up and say, guess what? I am a public speaker. People are saying, I'm scared of speaking. I'm afraid of public speaking. I don't know if that's really true because almost everybody's a public speaker today. In fact, a very, very public speaker. See, you're really not afraid of speaking because you are a speaker already. If you tweet, you speak. If you Facebook, you speak. If you blog, you speak. You're already a very public speaker. Now, those of us who say, hey, I want to be a speaker or I am a speaker, we definitely narrow that definition somewhat because we're being a lot more intentional. We're wanting to make sure that our words and our thoughts are creating actions and creating change. But in order to really make the biggest difference that we want to, we have to make sure that we've redefined public speaking so that we can reach as many as possible. We can impact as many as possible. We can influence as many as possible. So number one, the definition of public speaking has changed. The old definition meant Podium. The new definition means platform. So in the old days, you literally stood on the stage. You literally were behind some sort of podium and you gave your talk and that was it. And then it got crazy. We were able to use like lavalier mics or a wireless mic and now we can roam upon the stage. Well, now as Willie Shakespeare had said, the whole world is a stage. Our platform may very well be our website. And from that point on, everything has shifted. So the definition of public speaking has changed. We need to embrace that. Secondly, the audience has changed from an auditorium to a very real multidimensional audience. The audience is no longer simply in an auditorium, but it can be a podcast, a webinar, a workshop, a keynote, a teleseminar, a ballroom, radio. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because the auditorium has become virtual. Yes, we still want to get in front of a real, live, living, breathing, blood-pumping audience and see them face-to-face and shake the hands and have the conversations and feel the... The transfer of emotion between audience and ourselves, we want all that. But understand that the auditorium has shifted to an audience that's very broad. And we've got to embrace that as well. So the definition has changed from podium to platform. The audience overall has changed from an auditorium to a virtual audience. And number three, the delivery has changed. It used to be very one-dimensional. And now it is very intentional and very interactional. We used to not interact with our audiences hardly at all. People would get up and they would speak and they would do their keynote. They would fly into the last possible moment. They would take the stage and then they would leave. 
every now and then there would be a sales speaker that would come and they would speak and then they would be back at their table with the sole purpose of selling gear. And that was it, right? Now the delivery has changed. Certainly it's spoken or it could be written or it could be graphic or it could be any sort of presentation tools that are used today. So delivery is no longer about simply being verbal and controlling the conversation from a stage. Now it's very broad. And it's very interactional. It goes from one to many to one to one as we become more of a community. As we are engaging our audiences in so many different ways. So the delivery has changed. And then finally, the system has changed from an agent to actually becoming the leader, the authority. So agent to authority. The system has changed from agent to authority. Back in the past... People basically went, got an agent, and then the agent booked him or her, and they hit the road, right? It it was a beautiful system. It was so clean, so elegant, so simple. And I still hear speakers today saying, if I could just get an agent to book me. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's a lot like it is in the book industry. Back in the 70s and 80s, for those of you who were around back then, you basically wrote a book proposal and you shopped it to agents who then would take it to the publisher. So you had to prove the worth of your idea. You basically did research and said, here's evidence that this market is real. Here's evidence that there will be enough buyers. All right. So that's the way it was. There was an agent. But now you have to be an authority. You have to have actually created the market. You have to actually have the audience in place in order to get that book published. Because what does a commercial publisher want to know? Can you sell your book? Yeah, yeah, I know that's odd. We go to a commercial publisher because we're wanting them to sell the book, right? No, that's not the way it works today. You go to the publisher and you provide proof that you will be worthy of their investment. Same thing is true when it comes to public speaking. You see, you basically have to prove that you've got the audience and then an agent is willing to go out and promote you because you're already known, right? You're already established. Now, I don't, I don't say that to be discouraging at all. I don't want anybody to go, great, if that's what it takes to be a a public speaker today, I'm just not going to do it. Nope, not at all. Instead, it's an incredible opportunity. Because in the past, the publisher or the agent, they owned all the asset. They owned the market. And so we had to leverage what they owned. Now, we get to build the audience. We get to step in front of them anytime we want. We get... To book ourselves. And that might not seem attractive until you realize if you had 500, 1,000, 5,000 on an email list and you decided that you are embracing the change of delivery and the, the change of the audience and you decide that you're going to do a webinar and you're going to use some presentation skills and you email out your list and they come to your venue your venue and you didn't need the agent or you didn't need the publisher because you were the one that aren't is not doing the work for the agent you're not doing the work for the quote publisher you're doing the work for yourself to benefit your audience so things have certainly changed it was simple years and years ago but that doesn't mean that it was necessarily better Today's world is better. There's so many more opportunities for you as a speaker. And know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. You are a public speaker. In fact, a very public one. You've been listening to the Engage Podcast. Head on over to EngagePodcast.com and get your free public speaker training that will help you avoid becoming a human tranquilizer. 
EngagePodcast.com. Speak with passion or just leave me a note.